After nearing the east coast of Florida Monday night into Tuesday, Dorian will lift northward with the latest Hurricane Center forecast, weaker than it currently is, but still is a powerful hurricane. While you were sleeping, Hurricane Dorian kept pounding the Bahamas. The AP says it's one of the strongest Atlantic storms ever recorded. Dorian's leaving the National Weather Service with one mission. That's warning people to prepare. South Carolina's governor issued a mandatory evacuation for coastal counties that starts at noon today. Those in South Carolina are worried about one aspect of the storm in particular. That's what I'm worried about, the wind. The wind, is, that'll be a changer for me to either stay or go. Schools and state government offices will be closed starting tomorrow. The state governor says the wind from Hurricane Dorian is expected to hit later this week. This is a very serious hurricane, 185 miles an hour. We know that we cannot make everybody happy, but we believe that we can keep everyone alive. Officials report about 830,000 South Carolinians are in the mandatory evacuation zone. The approaching storm caused several governors in the south to tell people to stock up. Grocery stores in Myrtle Beach still have plenty of supplies after some people worked overnight to keep shelves stocked. Gas stations are a popular pit stop with people topping off their gas tank before the storm. Meteorologists are keeping a close eye on the storm, but its path continues to change. Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis says the storm has slowed down, but he would like to see it track more to the east. He said around 4,500 National Guard soldiers and airmen have been activated to respond to any impacted areas. Here's video from Wildwood, Florida. It shows dozens of power trucks ready to respond to the coast for Hurricane Dorian. The trucks are from all over the country. Sheriff's office. Florida sheriff's deputies are making sure no one is left behind. Martin County, Florida issued mandatory evacuations yesterday. Deputies immediately started knocking door to door in vulnerable areas to make sure neighbors know the dangers. If someone's caught in the storm and calls 911, officials might not be able to get to them, especially when roads are flooded and power lines are down. It's nerve wracking for us because we want to do the best job that we can and we're here to protect people. Deputies say they can't physically force people to leave, but they are hoping people take this storm seriously. Here's what's happening right now when it comes to Dorian, uh, mainly a state park. It stayed park over the Bahamas overnight. We're now learning how much damage, though, it's packing. CNN reporting that Dorian's winds have knocked out power. Uh, Oakman, which is a CNN correspondent reporter, also says it sounds like a jet engine from all of the wind that's uh, happening in the Bahamas. The latest government report shows major damage, including a severe property damage and storm surge. The life-threatening Category 5 storm slowly moved west after making landfall in the northern Bahamas. Yesterday, it had 185 mile per hour winds. It's a massive storm. It really is. All right, thank you. If you're making your way back from Labor Day weekend today, you're in luck. AAA says gas prices are the lowest they've been on the holiday weekend in the last three years. The national gas price average is a quarter cheaper than it was last year, according to AAA. It's a welcome news for one Missouri driver. You know, whenever gas prices go up, not only do you have to spend more, you feel it makes me upset. AAA says Hurricane Dorian is not expected to raise gas prices because it's going up the East Coast. Most oil production there is underground. In just a few hours, St. Louis area volunteers and firefighters will be heading to the East Coast. 32 volunteers from the American Red Cross are set to leave this morning. The focus is going to be on getting storm victims all of the essential supplies they need. The biggest thing the Red Cross needs right now is funding. It's in addition to the 52 volunteers from Missouri Task Force 1 who left last week. 